I think the global hunt for yield is a long-term secular trend that's hard to ignore. If you look at interest rates globally, I know that we're all talking today about negative rates, but interest rates have been in secular decline for the last 25 plus years. So over that time, whether you look at pension funds, insurance companies, retirees, against this persistent backdrop of low rates, everybody around the globe is looking for alternative ways to, to get yield. So in terms of the rate of return for an investor uh, in areas, for instance, I mean, a 10-year Treasury yield is what, at 1.77 or so yep. percent yep. right now. What is the rate of return there? Yeah, so it's interesting. If you, if you ask most pension fund CIOs, they'll tell you they're going to try to make an actuarial return of 5 to 8 percent. Now, the problem is with rates where they are today, as an example, 30 years ago, the 10-year Treasury represented about 80% of a pension's target rate of return. Wow. Today, it's about 25%. So what that's done is it's created a huge funding gap for most state pensions. Um, and as they try to come up with a portfolio allocation, the typical 60-40 is not working anymore. So they're coming to us at a minimum looking at face for 5 to 8% returns. And hopefully for those that are willing to take a little bit more risk, we can do better. What sectors are you finding the most opportunities in right now? Yeah, so uh, in terms of the markets that we invest in, anything self-originated private credit, and that could be in corporates, it could be in real estate, it could be in asset-backed, but anywhere we can, we can create credit or originate is where we're spending all of our time. In terms of the industries, not surprisingly given what's going on in the economy, the bulk of what we're doing is in service-oriented companies, healthcare services, business services, really shying away from some of the more cyclical types of things. Are you seeing any evidence, because there's concern when we had the ISM manufacturing number out that was so disappointing, that eventually that could spill over into services. Are you concerned about that at all? I think it's more about the consumer mm -hmm. more than services. Obviously, the services are, are providing uh, service to the consumer, but there's a real bifurcation in the economy, and we see it in our portfolio between the industrial economy and the service economy. Right now, consumer balance sheets are healthy. Wages are up, unemployment is low, savings rate is up, so it, it feels good, but if the consumer tips over, obviously that would be a big, big issue. Private credit is basically shadow banking. I don't like, I don't really like that. You don't like not that, in the you don't like that because a, a lot of the banks, um, the major CEOs of the major banks yeah. say that this is the one of the biggest risks out there. Yeah, I, so uh, the reason I don't like it is I, I always uh -huh. picture someone, myself with a black hat and a penciled on mustache <laughs> lurking in the Underneath shadows a, to, a street light right, or to something. Make, a, make a loan to someone. But the reality is we in the non-bank lending system, and that can mean a lot of different things to different people, if it's corporates or real estate or structured, grew out of a persistently low interest rate environment and a lot of regulatory constraint in the system that prevented capital flowing to small businesses and middle market real estate, et cetera, et cetera. So I think non-bank lenders are fulfilling a real important function in the capital markets. I think one of the reasons why people use the term shadow banking is up until recently, there was some you know, opacity in, in people's understanding of what it was that we did. Right. Now, private credit, I don't hear it as much because I think most large institutional investors have allocated to the asset class. They've had a good experience with it, and they're making, making good returns. Michael, pleasure speaking with you. Thanks Thank for you. having me. Appreciate Michael Arigetti.